So this is the instrument cluster from my 2008 Peugeot Boxer motorhome. Why is it not in the motorhome? It's not in the motorhome because for about a year now the gauges have been intermittently not working. Um, they keep getting stuck. It's actually not the first time I've taken it out, which is why I didn't video it. Uh, I, but I videoed it putting it back in, so you can see that there. What's happening is that the gauges fail to move and um, sometimes they eventually start moving after a long drive, sometimes they don't. Um, it started off just with the fuel gauge, um, which I didn't worry about too much because you can tell from the trip computer how many miles you got left roughly. Um, but then the other stage gauges started failing and when the uh, the temperature gauge makes me slightly nervous just in case, although the van has never overheated, uh, and the speedo i think is probably illegal so you can see it's stuck there i was um finding that they were all getting very sticky and they're all even if i get them to move they're very gritty um so i eventually gave up and decided that i was going to need to do something about it went to the garage and they quoted me 1200 pounds for a new instrument cluster didn't like the sound of that on a 16 year old van so I thought I would take it to pieces and have a look. I found the part number of the stepper motors are actually printed on them hand handily and look them up on AliExpress. Though there's a letter A on the end of these, but I don't think that makes any difference. And they arrived oh, a week or two back and I thought I would see if it's possible to exchange them or not. Spoiler, it worked perfectly. A bit fiddly, but it worked perfectly. Yeah. There's almost certainly a tool for doing that, and I almost certainly do not have it. I hate little bits of finickety plastic. The pointers are a push fit onto a smooth shaft on the motor, um, but they are quite tight. There is a lug on the back of the pointer, um, so you can get them off, but it takes a bit of persuasion, and you need to hold them very tight, otherwise they might snap in half. Although I did notice you can buy them on eBay. First of all, I thought I'd just cut the pins and be able to pull them out, but actually the plastic uh, mounting bracket of the stepper stops you from pulling them out even if the pins are cut. Ah, I see, okay. <laughs> it's not quite as easy as that because the plastic part is still going through the pins. So cutting the pins there isn't helping. For the other three, I figured out exactly how to do it, uh, and you'll see that in a minute. This is not the way to do it. Uh, the way to do it is to dremel off both the plastic and the pins and then push the pins through from the front. Uh, doing it this way, I actually managed to uh, pull one of the tracks off the board, because if you try and push them through from the back to the front, you're more than likely to push the solder and the track uh, or push the track rather off the board with the, any remaining solder that's on the pin so that was not a good idea even if it's even if it's not with a hot soldering iron so this this first one was a bit of a learning experience and I, and I had to repair one of the tracks afterwards Unfortunately. Just managed to dislodge one of the uh, one of the pins has pulled the track off with it, but fortunately it actually just runs along to another through hole connection so I can just just bridge that with a piece of wire, that's no problem. Now, so from China, AliExpress, we have hopefully a replacement part. Well, it pops through the hole nicely, very good. Uh, 
uh, the smoke extractor tube is getting in the way of the component in front. The bit of video when I went searching for some enameled wire to make up the broken track has gone missing somewhere, but anyway, uh, that's what I did. Check it. Yeah, that's the broken track. Just a bit of a jumper across the other piece of enameled wire that I had lying around. Uh, let's check the other connection. That one there should go to there. Yeah. Looks like it should go there. I'm just following the tracks here. That one there. Excellent. Yeah, conveniently there's through holes. I can check those connections. So that is that stepper, which I've just realised, unfortunately, is the temperature gauge, uh, which is the only one that I can't easily check uh, without waiting for ages. Uh, My plan was to do a fuel gauge okay. first so I could very quickly check it on the van, but um, I got the wrong one because it was upside down, of course. So at this point, I was trying to figure out how I can get the stepper motors off without risking damaging uh, any more of the tracks on the front of the circuit board and decided that it was actually going to be easier to dremel the pins and then the piece of plastic holding the pins together off the back of the board um, and then I would have the pins completely free and I could push them through from the front uh, to avoid any possibility of dislodging the track on the front of the board. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing after a bit of pondering. So that's what I did with the second one but I forgot to record the dremeling bit. Uh, this was just cleaning up the holes, I believe. But I did more or less get the, the dremeling on the uh, the other two, uh, Speedo and uh, Rev Counter. Okay, so I plugged it back in and connected the battery and we least have uh, a clock which is obviously wrong so hopefully if I turn the ignition on the left dial should move because I've got fuel in the tank okay good so that seems to work excellent so the right kind of stepper motors replace the other two now and put it all back together Okay, so having tested it and discovered that these are in fact the right stepper motors and they do work as expected, I'm going to make a, an attempt to replace the last two, which is the uh, rev counter and the speedo. So I think that's what I'm going to do. These motors are awful. I mean, that, that is as gritty. If you almost hear it, it's, it's really gritty inside. Um, and you can't get in them, they're never going to clean up. So. So after a bit of uh, dentistry, they then will pull out through the hole in the board. There are snap clips. They take a bit of force to pull them through, but they will they will pull through then. Then it's just a case of cleaning the holes and uh, putting a new one in. So I could probably use a surface mount gun to melt all four pins and pull the whole thing out in one go, one fell swoop, but a bit risky because I didn't want to risk overheating the front of the board. So... That's why I did it this way. Ah, uh, tip of the soldering iron's coming loose. Why does that always happen at the most? Ah, uh, most awkward time. One. A bit short on the back there because of the way I had to dremel them. So this is where I figured it out. Push them through with the soldering iron and then there's enough space on the back to grab them. That's the way to do it.
So quickly testing them with a meter just to make sure the joints are good. Unfortunately, the uh, audio appears to have disappeared, so you can't hear the multimeter beeping, but never mind. Uh, a bit more dremeling, I'll spare you that, and we can get the last one removed. In case you haven't spotted it by now, they snap through the centre hole with four little lugs, so you need to push the lugs back through the hole to release them from the board. And it's just a little bit fiddly, but uh, can be done. Uh, just removing the last piece of plastic from the pins. Tin up the soldering iron and push the pins through. This time I tried to balance it so that you can actually see them coming through. Carefully clamping it so that I don't need to hold it upright. Turn it around so that you can't see what's happening. Brilliant. I just hooked them out with a scale for them on this one, I think. And for the final time, clean out the holes with a solder sucker. The last of my new shiny stepper motors and once again, I failed to have it on camera in frame, but it slipped through the hole. These looked excellent, the solder sucked in there, so I don't really need to test them, but I tested them anyway just to make sure, and the audio is still not there, so beep. Beep, beep, beep. Right, uh, the final step, so that's all four steppers replaced. Flux off of the, don't want it to, Corroded, really. Put a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the toothbrush and then slide it off just to try and remove the flux from the, the board just in case it has a tendency to make them uh, corrode over time. Now, I'm not going to push these on real hard until Stanley get out of the way. Stanley get out of the way. Come on, Stanley cat. Oh. Right, the end stop for that one should be there. Pushing it on lightly, and once I'm certain that they're in the right place, I'll so just going up against the end stop and then putting it there. I assume that at the end stop it's at zero, right? Okay, so these motors only turn about 270 degrees, they've got end stops on them. So, my idea is to push the dials on lightly to the spline, rotate them 
anti-clockwise until they start slipping because the motors have hit the end stop and then keep turning until they're at the zero position so that therefore the motor is at the end stop when the dial is at the zero position and then hopefully everything will be calibrated correctly um, that's what I was doing here playing with the dials uh, anti-clockwise of course except for the fuel gauge because that one turns the other way it starts off pointing to the right and turns vertical so it goes anti-clockwise so it needs to be turned clockwise to the end stop and of course it's very satisfying turning them because they all move beautifully smoothly unlike the old versions I realised at this point that I hadn't put the little plastic covers on but then I also thought I would go and test it in the van to make sure that everything was okay so in fact I only lightly yeah. rested the back on and went down to the van and started it to make sure that everything was good before I finalised the assembly and put the snap clips back in place because they're a bit of a swine to take off. Okay so that's looking good, half fuel tank, rev counter seems to work. Uh, so I'm pretty confident the speedo will work as well. It's sat at zero at the moment, which is where it would be. It hasn't moved, so we're all good there. I'll have to take it for a run in the morning. Okay, so the final bit. Then onto there. Ah, I forgot. I forgot the little little caps. That's better. That's better. Goes on to there. Goes on to there. There we go. One binnacle back together. Let's go and stick it in the van. Okay, so it's the binnacle. Uh, very simply fixed into this. There's just one connector that we have to snap into there. Simply drops into the hole, the pegs rest in the bottom, there we are, that's in the right place. These star shaped connectors here. Goes into there, goes into there. Yeah, there's two screws, one there, one there, and then two at the top. Uh, I'm not going to put them in for now because it's tempting fate until I've driven it around. And check that all of those gauges are actually working but i'll do that in the morning yay so it's taken out for a run and everything seems to work speedo works as well of course uh, engine warning lights come on i think that came on when the battery connection slipped off because i don't like disconnecting or connecting the dashboard but the battery connected okay so i plugged the diagnostic reader into the van to check that fault code and it turned out to be a P0603 intermittent fault. Uh, when I look that up on the internet it says it's the keep alive memory self test failing. Uh, something to do with uh, uh, storing adaptive calculations that need to be kept alive or saved whilst the vehicle isn't operating. Ooh, and looking at common problems that trigger the code, it says uh, lack of proper voltage to the keep alive memory connection on the PCM. Yeah, well, battery terminal falling off would do that. So my guess is uh, when the battery connection fell off, it uh, did something a bit stupid because I think it didn't fall off cleanly. It tapped on the negative terminal a few times and upset the computer. So I just reset that one and uh, all seems well now. So I wondered what was actually wrong with these steppers that was causing them to jam up. Well, it turns out that you can pop the back plate off with a sharp knife. And inside is a little bit of rust. You can just see it on the back edge there. And then inside the shell where the windings are, it's really hard to see. There is actually a little bit of rust, you can just see it there. So 
tiny bit of rust just just appearing on the inside there. I guess that's the trouble with a vehicle that sits around for many weeks without being used outdoors in West Wales where it rains and is very damp for much of the year. And the tolerance must be so tight on those that it doesn't take very much to bind them up. There we go. That was the problem with all my gauges on the van.